Welcome to 6.06, .06, our mollusk lab. Today we'll be working with oysters. An oyster is composed of two shells called valves. When working with an oyster, be careful. Some edges of the valves can be very sharp. The oyster is more pointed at one end. This is the anterior end called the umbo. The posterior end is the larger curved end called the bill. The height of the oyster is the distance from the umbo to the bill. This oyster is approximately two and three quarters inches. Observe how the two valves fit together. The shorter of the two valves is the right valve. Notice how the umbo of the longer valve, the left valve, extends beyond the umbo end of the right valve. Typically, the right valve of an oyster will be shorter and less concave than the left valve. However, since the size and shape of an oyster can be influenced by its environment, observing the umbo end of the oyster is the most reliable way of differentiating between the right and left valves. Now we're going to shuck our oyster. We're we'll using the hinge method. Place the oyster left valve down. Remember that is the longer of the two. Place it down on a hard surface with the umbo pointing towards you. That's the more pointed end of the oyster. Firmly hold down the oyster with a gloved hand. Insert the oyster knife in the hinge of the oyster. Rotate the knife around until the pressure pops the hinge. Move the knife around the upper edge of the right valve until the adductor muscle is felt. Sever it. Place the right valve off to the left side. On the inside surface of the valves you'll observe a dark area. This is the scar from where the oyster's adductor muscle was attached to the valves. The adductor muscle functions to close the oyster shells. The relaxation of the adductor muscle allows the shells to gape open. On the inside surface of the right valve, you may see a small indentation no bigger than the head of a pin. This is a quincent muscle. Remember, it's on the right valve, the smaller valve. Flip the two valves over to expose the external surfaces of the valves. The oyster reef is home to a number of different organisms. How those organisms utilize the oyster reef can have a lasting impression on an oyster. You may notice barnacles, empty barnacle shells on the valve, barnacle scar, a footprint scar of a barnacle on an oyster. These scars are typically round and have striations radiating from the center. A footprint scar is evidence of the previous barnacle attached to the oyster shell. Some barnacle, some oyster valves also have been a boring sponge. The holes that you find on your oyster will be created by the boring sponge. Lacy crust bryozoan, uh, encrusted structure, and that creates a colony of lacy crust in a honeycomb appearance. Hooked mussel are bissel threads remaining after hooked mussel has been detached from the oyster. Oyster mudworm, burrows created by the oyster mudworm can be seen on the inside of an oyster valve. The dark spot that is formed there is called a blister. Limey tube worm, a calcareous tube remains of a limey tube worm on the oyster valve. Oyster spat scar, a scar on the left valve these scars are smooth and irregular in shape. Refer to figure 10 
and that will show you the tentacles. Now carefully fold back the mantle on your oyster. Directly underneath the mantle are the gills. Refer to figure 9 for a closer image of the gills. They are the largest organ of the oyster. Each gill consists of two folds of tissues. There are two points of attachment. And to see the closer look, please look at figure 10 and figure 11 for the anterior and posterior points of attachment. It's difficult to see on the video. So make sure you look at the closer look with figure 10 and 11. The adductor muscle is composed of two types of fibers, translucent and white, and is located toward the posterior end of the oyster. And remember the posterior is the wider end. Refer to figure 13 for a closer up look. The weight of this muscle accounts for 20 to 40 percent of the soft tissue weight of an oyster. You know its strength if you've ever tried to open a live oyster. The heart is located in the pericardial cavity that is covered by a thin tissue called the pericardium. Check out figure 14 for a close-up look of the pericardium. Okay, locate the heart by carefully removing the pericardium, that thin tissue. Figures 15 and 16 will give you a close-up of the heart. Next, follow the pathway of the digestive system. An oyster's digestive system consists of labial palps, mouth, esophagus, stomach, digestive gland, intestine, rectum, and anus. There are two labial palps, and this is figure 17. One associated with each gill. Each are bilobed, ciliated, and the function is to sort and transfer food from the gills to the mouth. Food is then passed from the mouth through a short esophagus, figure 18, to the stomach. The stomach is surrounded by the digestive gland that is the site for enzyme production and intracellular digestion. From the stomach, undigested and digested materials are passed to the intestines where absorption of nutrients and further processing of waste occurs. Waste products are passed onto the rectum exiting out the anus. Refer to figure 19 to locate the rectum and anus. Alright, thank you for joining us for our Oyster Lab.